Well, hello, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. Praise the Lord for another Sunday. You are here on Apostle's Desk, and today I am excited to share with you the discipline of meditation. That is our goal today. This is what God wants us to know and understand is why meditation is important to the life of a Christian and how as a Christian to actually meditate. So Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for all of the glory that we get to see as we see and move through your creation. We thank you, Lord, that you, you, you have shown us so much and yet and still there is so much for us to know and understand. And on this topic of meditation, Lord, is my prayer that your ways are understood, what you desire as meditation be explained. And that, Lord, that for all those who are hearing my voice right now, who are hearing this message, that they will receive your word and your ways and your understanding on meditation. Father, I thank you for being able and being willing to talk to us, to explain to us, and to bring us up higher in our thinking and in our ways. Thank you, Father, for the gift of being able to withdraw to a quiet place, to be alone and commune with you in a way that is familiar to you. So, Lord, I bless you for this word. I yield myself to your to your leading and to your guidance. And I yield my mouth and my thoughts. And I pray that everyone praying this with me will do the same. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So first thing I want us to under, to do is to set ourselves in the word on what meditation is and why God is calling us in this day and age to have time where we meditate. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to walk through the scripture and then we're going to show you, God is going to prayerfully show you through me, through examples that he has given me on what meditation is so we can understand the differences between what Eastern philosophies call meditation and then what the Lord calls meditation. And then we'll go through and we'll talk about why meditation is important. And then last and not least, I'll leave you with six things, six tips of how to meditate and how to meditate properly. And then at the end of that, we'll do an exercise of meditation for just a few minutes and then you'll be off. And I encourage you all at the end of this podcast to practice some meditation. Amen. Amen. So let's look at the word on meditation first and foremost. And we see here in Psalms right at the at the start of Psalms, Psalms chapter one, verses one and two. It reads, how happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway of sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction and he meditates on it day and night. And then Psalms 119 verses one and two. Again, this is all setting up the foundation that meditation belongs to. To the Lord, meditation belongs in the life of a Christian, and this discipline of meditation is one of the ways that God speaks to us. Amen. So Psalms 119 verses 1 and 2 says, How happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk according to the Lord's instruction. Happy are those who keep his decrees and seek him with all their heart. And then lastly, for our, our setting up our foundation, we drop, drop down to 
verses 9 through 16 in Psalms 119, and it says, How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping your word. I have sought you with all my heart. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have treasured your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Lord, may you be blessed. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I proclaim all the judgments from your mouth. I rejoice in the way revealed by your decrees as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and think about your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. And so we see here in this passage of scriptures, we, we see that meditation is how we hold ourselves honorable. It's one of the ways that God uses to reveal things to us. And it's also the way that we see joy, happiness, peace come into our lives. It's through the rejoicing of the of the revelations in God's decrees. And we get those as we meditate. We see that over and over again. He meditates on the Lord's instruction day and night. That's how the son delights in the Lord's way. That's how we are. That's how we, we, we seek him with all of our heart. It's through that meditation. It's through that meditation that we will not and do not forget his word. But meditation is a practice. It is, is, is a practice. It's a skill. It's something that we can learn to do and we can learn to do it well. But we have to understand what meditation is. And according to, to definition, meditation is the practice of recreating silence. So this so meditation does go along with solitude. And the way God has revealed it to me is, is that meditation on his word comes as a development and an outcome of our solitude. And so it's through meditation that we move beyond the superficialities, the superficial qualities and character of culture. And this is important to understand because culture will tell us one thing about meditation. And this is where I picked up on meditation at uh, early in my life. Whenever I heard the word meditation or thought or somebody suggested that I meditate, my mind immediately went to, well, I have to assume a certain posture physically. I have to assume a certain posture mentally. And there, there must be some kind of mantra or something that I need to repeat in order to really be meditating because the world puts more focus on the performance of meditation than it does in the actual practice of meditation. And we see this when we look at the differences between how Eastern philosophies view meditation versus how the Bible and the Lord teaches us and shows us what meditation is. And so, so to set up the juxtaposition or the, the compare and contrast, Eastern philosophies and Eastern meditation utilizes many physical exercises to remove one's mind from this reality, from this physical reality. And it's critical in Eastern meditation and Eastern philosophies that, that lean on meditation that we must escape this reality when meditating. And so the final goal in Eastern philosophies for meditation is the detachment from this reality. The soul is empty and is opened up to this other reality and the mind is empty. But when we're in, when, when we look at Christian meditation, the focus now is on continual obedience and faithfulness 
to the Lord and his ways. In Christian meditation, we're encouraged to withdraw from people with the purpose of deepening our commune with our creator God. We're encouraged in Christian meditation that the focus is for our spirit and soul to hear God's voice and to obey his word. And it's not in an in the, the it's not in an attempt to empty our minds, but it's to feel to fill our minds. But what are we filling our minds with? And here is the key between Eastern philosophy meditation and Christian meditation. Christian meditation is focused on God's word and his precepts, just as we read Psalms 119. And in Psalms, the writer of Psalms, the writer of, of Psalms understood meditation because meditation was understood by the culture of the time. It wasn't strange to see the prophets of the day to go off to themselves and meet God there and to be alone with God. And we see in through through Abraham's life and through Moses's life, when God began to speak to them, it was usually in places where they were away from everybody else. You know, God spoke directly to Abraham to leave Ur. God spoke to Moses as Moses was through a burning bush as Moses was by himself. And even we see this in the life of Jesus. In, in Matthew 14, we see Jesus withdraw from people to go away to be with the Lord. And so understand that when as a Christian, you hear the word meditation. This is a filling of our mind with God's mind. Amen. Amen. And so why, why do we meditate? Um, I, I heard a quote from a 15th century German Christian author named Thomas A. Kempis, who said meditation helps us to grow into a familiar friendship with Jesus. And isn't that good? Isn't that what we all want? We all want to have this friendship with our divine creator, God, with our, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Well, this is how that relationship is cultivated. It's through the time that we spend communing with him, with God, the Father, God, the Son, Jesus, by the power of God, the Holy Spirit, to create this emotional and spiritual space. And in this space, we we give over to Christ and allow Jesus to construct this inner sanctuary within our heart. And this meditation opens the door and brings this living reality into our life. And think about that. If meditation is constructed in the inner sanctuary of our heart, then that means that meditation is that is a portable sanctuary. And it's brought and it's taken everywhere that we are. Amen. And, and I, I want you to see this. God wants us really to understand this, that the practice of meditation is an inward practice, but it has great outward reward. It has great outward manifestation of changes in our life. And, and why is that? Well, one of the things that God pointed out to me was that we get these insights through meditation. And some of these insights are deeply practical. It's the practicality of the meditation that brings us these insights. And that is a really, really wonderful thing. And it's here, it's in this meditation, our time of meditation, that God gives us instructions on a myriad of things. He gives us instructions 
on how to relate with our spouses or with our children or with our parents. He also gives us instructions on how to deal with sensitive problems or business situations. Because it's in this time of meditation that we still ourselves inwardly. This, th this is why meditation is an inward work. Because our minds in this world are so bombarded with information and knowledge and, and, and the enemy loves. He loves to target a Christian who is who has who has set themselves and made a quality decision to practice meditation with busyness. Oh, busyness is one of the most diabolical weapons of the enemy because it comes. He uses that right at the moment that we desire to be still. Because think about it, whenever. I'll, I'll, put, I'll use myself as an example. Whenever I'm thinking of what it is that I need to do or, or thinking about the things that I have to go about accomplishing in my day, the enemy never comes and attacks me with, well, you should be still. You should try. Just take a few moments for yourself and quiet your mind and gather yourself before you go and do the next thing. No, that's not what the enemy does. Even in my time where I'm I'm thinking of all the things I have to do, the enemy will bring up other things that I have to do to just keep me busy. But then I start to look Well, I need to I need to get some time for meditation. And it's in that time when I when I, I go to my office and I sit there and I have everything off that the, the, the battle in the mind begins of well don't forget you gotta do this you gotta do that you gotta do this you gotta do that don't forget this don't forget that don't forget uh kanisha asked you to do this don't forget that that so-and-so asked you to to meet them here and oh oh please don't forget that you also have all these meetings to do but the enemy never says make sure you get some time to meditate and figure out what it is that god wants you to do for your day you know, he doesn't do that. But medit but God, when he calls us into meditation, he calls us into stillness. He calls us into that space to recreate silences. And it's in that space that God will begin to speak and give us direction in meditation. Uh, not meditation. It's in meditation that he begins to give us instructions. For our very life. Now, I spoke earlier about my understanding of meditation before I started really seeking God on what meditation is. And when I did, the, med the idea of meditation, God showed me that it's very natural. It's a very natural human activity. It's, it's really just as natural as breathing. You know, and we don't need any special gifts or powers uh, th there. There isn't a level of enlightenment that we have to reach first before we can begin to truly meditate. For us, meditation is really very simple and there there aren't any elaborate techniques that we need to learn before we can begin meditating. You know, in God's word, he says, be still. That's first. Be still. And then know. Well, when we're meditating, yes, be still. And then know. Know what? Know that he is God. Know that he is wanting to speak to you. Know that he is there meeting you and he is there with you. As you take your portable sanctuary of meditation with you throughout your day. Now, in this process of meditation, uh, I explained that there, there were six, six key points I want to leave with you in how to meditate. But before I do that, I'm really impressed by the spirit to, to explain that God will use our imaginations 
during our time of meditation. This is the same as Jesus using parables when he was explaining the kingdom of God and what the kingdom of God is like. You know, he used images that the people that he was talking to in that moment could understand to explain the things that they could not see. Well, God uses our imagination in that same vein. Our imagination is a wonderful gift that the Lord has given all of us. And one of the purposes for that is for him to speak to us in a way that we personally could understand. So the imagination that God has given me is different from the imagination that he's given you. And the imagination that he's given you is personal to you. So case in point, whenever God begins to speak to me about warfare or about the weapons of warfare or being a warrior, he speaks to me and, and, and he used my imagination. I begin it begins to be filled with images of modern warfare. I see a modern 20th century or 21st century soldier. I see 21st century weapons. And through that, I begin to see and understand how our weapons of warfare are not carnal. It's not against flesh and blood that we war. It's against principalities and rulers of this darkness and principalities and rulers in high places. I begin to see the battlefield as a modern battlefield. That's how God explains battle to me. He may explain it differently to you. And that's okay. That is perfectly okay. Because our imagination is so, it, it, it explains and it gives credence to God being so accommodating to us and so desires to be taken seriously in our world that he'll use these known images to help us understand what we understand very little of, which is the unseen realm. Amen. So the more we seek God's way, the more we desire to live in God's way, the more God will utilize our, Im our imagination for his good purpose. Amen. So here are the six ways that we can set ourselves up for successful for a successful time of meditation the first thing is we need time we need to dedicate a time in our day to meditate and a length of time if you're going through our warriors training school th this month we're focused on meditation and the discipline is to meditate for at least 30 minutes spend time that time meditating it, but if you're just wanting to develop the skill of meditating start with five minutes start with two to three minutes you know set a 15 minute goal whatever that goal of time is fight for that time set that time fight for it and then honor it and it could be first thing in the morning it can be in the middle of the day it can be um, right before you go to bed at night whatever time you and God set fight for that time the second thing is to center and settle yourself in that place so get comfortable not comfortable enough where you fall asleep but set yourself up to be comfortable and in a space that is quiet where you'll be uninterrupted and then the third thing is to sink into the presence of God. This is the posture. And, I, and I've heard uh, some, some of my mentors say they do a palms up, palms down type of mentality when they're meditating. Palms up meaning they're receiving from the Lord. So if they recognize an imagination that is coming from the Lord that is not necessarily a future thing, but it's something that they weren't necessarily contemplating on before their time of meditation or in their daily life 
they they have a palms up attitude to receive that insight. But if it's a care, if it's something that they're worried about or concerned about or it, it, it originates from their life, they do a hands down, meaning they're laying it at God's altar and they leave it there and they uh, spiritually imagine themselves stretched out before him and they release all that worldly care on the Lord, which is number four in that palms down state, release those worldly cares to the Lord. And then the fifth thing is to focus. You want to focus on scripture. You want to make sure that as you are going about or you're in your time of med meditation, pick a particular passage of scripture that speaks to you. Um, I have some friends who have a life scripture and whenever they go into meditation, this is what they meditate on. This is what they ruminate. They spend mental, intellectual activity and energy on this particular passage. Now, this is not study. So there's not like books and commentaries and dictionaries that are out and involved. This is they have that scripture. And what is that scripture saying to me in that moment? So this is all about the focus of the meditation and the focus of our meditation as the writer of, of the Psalms that we read at the beginning said, it is to bring the light is to be delightful in the Lord's instruction is to walk according to the Lord's instruction to be blameless. It's so that way we, we keep his word and proclaim his judgments. We keep his statues. It's the way that we are blessed. We meditate on his precepts. Amen. And then lastly, we receive. How is God speaking to me in this moment? What is God revealing to me in this moment? What does God want me to understand from these imaginations that he is bringing to my spirit and my mind at this moment? And so now that we've, we've gone through those six things, those six tips on how to move through and set ourselves up to meditate, let's let's practice this. Let's practice some meditation with the last couple of minutes that we have. And when I am meditating, when it's me and it's God and I've, I've put myself in this time where I'm quiet and I'm still. The scripture that God uses, <clears throat> that, that God gave me, was Joshua 1, 9. And if, if, if you come to my office, my, my home office, and Kanisha can tell you, she jokes about this all the time, is I have a corner in my office set up with a chair. And this chair is facing a wall. And on that wall, is the scripture that you see before you, Joshua 1, 9. Haven't I commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So let's use this scripture as, as an example. But for, for, your, for your time of meditation after this, you can use whatever scripture the, the Lord has led you to, influenced you through, blessed you with, use that scripture as your meditation. And so for the next two minutes, let's just spend time with this word on our hearts. Let's begin. Remember you're in a comfortable place, you're quiet, you're allowing those thoughts in your mind to 
be replaced with the word of God. Everything else is taking a back seat to what God wants you to understand in this moment. God's word is inerrant. God's word is for our rebuke, our correction, our instruction. God's word to us in Joshua 1, 9 says, Haven't I commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Think about each word as you read them and recite them to yourself. Allow God to implant visions in your, in your spirit, in your mind, on what it means to be strong and courageous. Allow God to reveal to you what those imaginations mean. What is God saying to you about not being afraid or discouraged? What is he showing you? How is God using your imagination right now to reveal to you that he is your God and that he is with you wherever you go? So as we close this time of meditation, what has God said to you? What do you come away with from this scripture? Whatever God showed you during that time is what he wanted you to know from meditating on Joshua 1 and 9. Now, it's different for all of us. But yet there are some similarities. But the differences come in the revelation and insight that God gave you through the imaginations that he gave to you. And so be thankful. Be thankful that through the simplicity of Christian meditation, we gain so much insight into this world and into the things of God and into ourselves. And that's part of the discipline. That's the outcome of the discipline of meditation. It is our growth. It is God's encouragement to our spirit to continue persevering. It's how we receive answers. So I close in prayer for everyone who is who is with us that as we practice the discipline of meditation 
that it grows our understanding of things unseen. It grows our understanding of how to receive revelation from the Lord, from you, Lord. It's through the discipline of meditation that we see Jesus able to fulfill his purpose and understand and see what you do, Lord, to hear what you do, Lord, and then to receive all that was necessary to do what we see you do, Father. So, Lord, it's my prayer right now that for each one of us that we grow in this discipline of meditation according to your way so that we can delight in your ways and we can keep your precepts on our hearts. We can follow your commands and statutes with joy and gladness. And that we can carry you with us everywhere that we go. Lord, thank you for your understanding and your your word and your teaching that encourages us to meditate day and night on your word. It's in your son Jesus name that we pray this and we bless you and I bless everyone who has joined me in this time of meditation today. Amen and amen. Well, I bless every one of you. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I pray that this word blessed you. If it did, hit that subscribe button, hit the like, leave some comments uh, on this podcast on how it blessed you. And then we will see you again next week. Have a blessed week. Love each and every one of you. Take care.